ladies and gentlemen, we got Coach Donnie Hess, official fourth long AFL correspondent, back, and now he's better than ever officially because he has a real fancy mic, and so uh, I'm excited to hear the, the beautiful pipes coming from uh, AFL correspondent Hess. How are you doing today, Coach? I am not doing too bad from hot and sultry Des Moines, Iowa. So much fun. <laughs> You'd think we would think I'm in Florida. It's 95 degree, 95 degrees today. I think it's like still like 85 out there. It's absolutely insane. So glad can't relate because <laughs> we had thunderstorms in Boise yesterday, believe it or not. Weird stuff. We'll trade you. Oh, we'll trade you. I'm good. But round 12, there was some really good food you played, but also a couple of Fairly controversial to really controversial calls and kind of happenings, um, depending on especially what team you root for. But we'll get into that. We're going to start things off, though, with round going to round 13, our power rankings from Coach Hess. You want to start us off with number five. Okay, we have a little bit of a shakeup after a couple of results this week. Number five would actually be last week's number two, the Port Adelaide Power. Unfortunately, with a loss to Geelong in week 12, kind of a stinging loss for them, kind of bounced loss. them down. Oh, yeah, especially. That was – I honestly thought that was going to be a great game, and it turned out to be a dud. Port Adelaide forgot that they needed to play. Well, see, I woke up in the morning to go catch up on my footy as I do. Um, then I was just looking at the score, and um, I thought there was a typo. <laughs> Thought there was a typo. Uh, I, I I watched part of this game. This game was hard to watch at times. Port just did not look the same, and Geelong looked like the form they were in last year when they were absolutely in fuego there for a while. So it'd be very interesting to see how Port bounces bounces back. They did get the win in round thirteen, so mm -hmm. they they did kind of bounce back after week twelve. But that was that was kind of a that was kind of a stinker there. So it did kind of make a lot of people kind of question where is port for real or did they kind of get lucky with some of the lower bottom ranked teams in the, in the, in the league. So it'd exactly. be definitely interesting, but still a respectable four and one in the last five. It's just one loss in the last two kind of, kind of takes you down the power rankings. A little it was bit. A bad loss as well. Right now they're currently tied with Brisbane uh, with 40 points overall. Um, they're still technically in that one spot, but five on your power rankings. I love it. Uh, number four, Number four would be the good old Richmond Tigers, having won two of their two of their last three and four of their last five, and uh, they're starting to see that form that they've had to win a couple of flags in the last three years. So, who knows? Watch out! The Tigers are roaring now, so it'll be definitely interesting. But an absolute dynamite game coming up here with with them in in, in uh, some of our tips in the next few weeks. So, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit later in the episode. But oh yeah. Nice, strong four and one in the last five for Richmond and two wins out of the last three. So, so number four, the Richmond Tigers. Now the current number two team in the AFL standings is your number three team this week. That'd be the uh, Brisbane Lions, a team again, four and one. They've won three of their last four and four of the last five. Again, another solid team. The thing I really question is, is will their goal kicking hurt them as the season goes on? Again, this team leads the league in behind kicked. Not a stat you want to lead in, especially with a team that's as high scoring as they are. But again, solid wins this week. Um, but we'll definitely see um, some strong, strong, strong games coming up for them to really kind of test them. But I, I, if I'm Brisbane's coaching staff, I really use this buy coming up here to work on their goal kicking because when you kick 18 behinds in a game, not good. No. Yeah, it's never a good sign. And then number two on your power rankings. Number two would be the Geelong Cats, the team that uh, beat up Port here uh, in, in round 12 and have beat fallen four. Of, close to understatement. And for their last five, the Cats are starting to really hit form. Um, and even without Ablett Jr. and without Selwood, they are solid. So the scary thing thing about it is, is once they get Selwood and Ablett back, this team could be quite a threat for the flag this year. But four wins out of the last five and the Cats, oh, uh, man, this should be quite interesting to see how these Cats go especially only four points back from that top spot that Port Adelaide and Brisbane are tied for. They could easily make a run in these uh, in this next stretch of rounds and that they have all the, the, 
they have a lot of momentum behind them right now as well. So mm-hmm. if they end up being the number one team at the end of the season, at the regular season, I would not be surprised by the least bit. But the number one team in your power rankings this week is... Holding the spot like last week is the West Coast Eagles. They have won eight consecutive games. They are the hottest team in the league right now. And with a dynamite matching a matchup coming up this week that we'll, we'll discuss a little bit later mm-hmm. when we look, when we look at the, the, the matches for this week and my tips later on a dynamite game that I cannot wait for this week. So we'll see. Can the West coast Eagles hold on to the top spot in the next rankings next week? We'll have to see, but eight wins in their last eight games and five and oh in their last five hard to say the west coast eagles aren't the hottest team in the afl right now and it's crazy to see where they were at the beginning of the season compared to where they were or where they are now now they're sitting nine and three mentioned that eight game win streak that means they were they started the season one and three and now mm-hmm. they're tied for um second they have 36 points tied with geelong right now that turnaround that they made at round five and then from then on has been remarkable to say the least easily making making some noise in the top eight in the top four hell like i said was saying about geelong who knows they could easily make the one spot um if we're looking at this right now plenty of time plenty of momentum on their side should be a fun uh next stretch of rounds yeah and still with a lot of tough match and still with a lot of good matchups between upper upper teams in the in the ladder so this is there's definitely definitely a shot to see either geelong or west coast nip the power laid in but we'll have to see it, this is there's still six games left for some five for others so this is this is going to be an interesting next few weeks especially considering they're going to have another footy festival after this week mm-hmm. of another three games in the span of two and a half weeks so we will we will definitely this this stretch run into the finals is going to be fun to watch 100 percent. but there we go the five is from five to one you have the power in port adelaide you got richmond Brisbane, Geelong, and West Coast still your number one team. But as I allude to a little bit ago in the intro, there was some controversy coming out of round 12. And the first thing that we need to talk about, probably the most controversial thing to happen, easily the most controversial thing to happen in round 12, maybe arguably the most controversial call to happen all season, was the Carlton versus Fremantle free kick at the end of the game. Carlton getting the free kick after the horn to walk off against Frio. You're, uh, you, I was a little confused by this, and just because of the controversy, I need to catch up on whether it be on Twitter. Then you helped explain to me very well over um, in our conversation on Twitter. And let's break this thing down before we debate the the controversy behind it. So, what actually happened in this play? Okay, so with about 14 seconds left to play, a, a Frio defender basically was trying to clear the zone. And especially in nowadays play, is they've, they've really wanted players to keep the ball in play. Mm-hmm. So the Frio, guy, the, the Frio player tried to drive it down the line, and it went out of play. Now, per the rules, if the referee does not feel that your kick down the line was done in, in, with the intent of keeping the ball in play, they can call deliberate. The referee called deliberate in this situation. I completely agree with that. I, I think that the Frio player was trying to kick it out of bounds, was just trying to clear the zone. He did it intentionally. Completely agree there. Carlton's player picks up the ball because he's the closest to the footy, which is he's allowed to do, runs on and tries to play the ball down the field. It skews off the side of his boot and goes out of bounds. As he is done kicking, the a Frio player drives into him, which is a late hit, mm-hmm. which then would be a free kick. Now, in that situation, the free kick is then taken further down the field. Here's where the controversy happens. There have been several photographs coming out that where the ball went out of play would basically be where the 50-meter arc and the out-of-bounds line intersect. When you look at where the free kick is taken, it's at least another 10 meters closer to goal. Mm-hmm. There's where the controversy starts massively. Then the second half of the controversy is, is that the player that's supposed to be taking the free kick is the one closest to the ball. If you take a look at the picture, unfortunately we don't have that luxury, um, is, is a player, can't remember his name right off the top of my head, 
but it's not the player that actually takes the free kick. The player that takes the free kick is probably another 10 to 15 meters away. Mm -hmm. So not only do the refs misplace the free kick, Mm -hmm. but then they let a person take the free kick that shouldn't have taken it. Now, would the person that took it still had a chance to kick the goal? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's all all the possibilities. It's probably going to be a good 55, 53, 55 meter kick, not an easy kick at an angle too, which adds a little bit more of a degree of difficulty to it. But the fact that Jack Nunes gets to take it from about 45 makes it a lot easier. And then he slots it home. Frio, for some people, got robbed of four points. Mm -hmm. Carlton gets four points. Now they're even closer to the eight. So there's a lot of controversy. Do I agree with the free kick? Do I agree with free kick? Yes. Do I agree with the free kick taker and where it was placed? No. Do I think the referees need, do I really think that they eventually maybe need to look at adding a new portion to arc, which is the goal review system, which they kind of talked, you kind of talked about in the, in the Cobra cast is, mm-hmm. is the only review system that they have is for goals. Yeah. And it literally is basically to see if it hit the post or if it was touched off the boot mm-hmm. in some situations, because this is out of bounds, because this goes out in the full and it does have a stoppage. I think in that situation to be sure that you have the right kicker and that it went out at the right spot, mm-hmm. I think Ark should maybe should be able to have a chance to look at it. I know it's going to slow the game down a little bit, and that's the one thing so many fans, both at home and even in this, and even in the crowds, don't want. We don't want slower games. We don't want all this. I mean, I think we all know watching. If you watch the NFL when they have to do a review, you're sitting there going. How long is this going to take? Well, you, oh, you take gosh. about a five-minute review only for them to still get it wrong is what we get in the yeah, NFL right now. There's and a reason for, we watch footies for super fast-paced, high-action action. Yeah. action and, and I think that's one of those situations where it's like, again, hindsight's twenty twenty. Jack Noons kicks it, okay? Yeah. If he doesn't kick it, nobody's going to find that photo. Nobody's going to go looking for it. If he misses, kicks it behind and Frio still wins, nobody's going to care. Mm-hmm. The only reason it is looked at is because he buried it. He hits the walk off. He hits the walk off home run. And, really and good. He, hit, not okay. he, he had plenty of room on that one, too. Yep. And, and the best part and, and, and the crazy part about it is, like I said, is it, it keeps Carlton with a shot to still be in the eight. So I, I understand free. I understand a lot of Frio fans upset are, are upset. Do I believe? Do I believe the guy that would have taken it would have made? I don't know. Again, it, it is one of those. It mm-hmm. is. It is a massive controversy. Unfortunately, controversy. Like, I almost agree with the old wrestling promoter Eric Bischoff. Controversy creates cash. <laughs> There's more people downloading it. There are more people looking at it. Do I want controversy? No, because it puts a little bit of a taint on it. Uh, Frio fans, I feel for you. I really do. And I, I know several Frio fans who I chat with all the time. And, and, and do I believe Frio got host? Yes. Do I believe the Carlton fans are going to take it because of all the bad luck they've had over the years? Yes. Hell yes. So, so it's going to be one of those where it's like you can't fix everything. Yeah. Do I think it'd be awesome if Art could make a review to that? Yes. But unfortunately, that won't be till the off season And whether ARC would even take a look at that, it's all up to the AFL house, and are they going to even take a look at it or not? Exactly. Now, this kind of call um, really reminds me of, especially for my, my normal viewer base, love all the new um, AFL footy fans that are watching. I really do appreciate all the support that you've given us, uh, but also for my viewers that were here before, um, the AFL aren't really knowledgeable in this. I could compare this to in the uh, similar kind of circumstances of a couple years ago, the playoff game between the Saints and the Rams, mm-hmm. when there's a blatant uh, pass interference call or pass interference that wasn't called, and which eventually screwed the Saints out of a victory. Now, it's a little different bec- because the call maybe not was as blatant, and then also it was a playoff game. This was a regular season game with, with Carlton and Frio, so the stakes aren't as high. But you can definitely compare it to that kind of play where it was something where it seemed like a pretty obvious call to make and it just wasn't and it resulted in a team losing arguably due to that call. So yeah. that's why I liked it, liked it based on there's I do like your idea of expanding replay. 
maybe not like totally expanding it, but in certain kind of calls like this, at the end of the game, where the game is pretty much on the line, if you brought in replay to this, and just to make sure you got the right call, I don't think very many people would be opposed to it, especially if, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. especially if you present, prevent something like this. I think that would be a good move for the AFL, and I think the fans would be behind it ultimately. Yeah, and I, I agree too. And like I said, it's it's an idea. It's a thought process. It's not something that it, it, it's going to – it's going to have his headaches if you mm-hmm. do add it in. Uh, again, it, there, there has been no addition of technology to any sport that has gone perfect right when it starts. Never. I mean, as we see in European soccer, <laughs> VAR is not exactly foolproof. <laughs> and if so we we'll, see we'll, say, NFL, we'll state it that way. They could still review a play for five minutes, and then they still get the wrong call, like I said. And it's human error. It's human error. Now, here's something that... Unless you're really a fan of his team, you probably hate him now, and you probably really disagree with what happened. And let's talk about Tom Lynch and his so-called, I'll quote it, I'll quote it his punishment um, for his two behind-the-play cheap shots that he uh, he was guilty of. Can we <laughs> want to talk about this one? <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. Okay. I saw you roll your eyes. <laughs> if I have anybody from Tiger Nation, please, please don't be upset with me. But I, I'm, I'm gonna say it like this: as a footy fan, I am a Swans fan. I have no skin in the game when it comes to Tom Lynch. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tom Lynch is a player that I think is the major beneficiary of. He's a superstar. So he's going to let it. There are going to be a few things that I think are going to be let slid a little bit when it comes to how he approaches himself. Okay. Do I believe that Hooker went after his broken hand and not as big a deal was made for him as Carlisle in the Saints Swans game when Carlisle chopped Dean Rampies? I mean, he looked like he looked like a hungry, hungry hippo mouth because <laughs> he was just chopping away. Now, Carlisle's chop was during a dead play and there was nothing going on. Mm-hmm. Hooker's situation was you could tell there was some frustration by by Lynch. Um, but the ball was nowhere near. The ball was actually out of play. If you actually watch the video, and I've watched it several times because I'm one of those, I don't want to come into this with a bad opinion. Yeah. I want to be sure my opinion is educated. Do I believe Tiger Nation throws on their blinders when it comes to Tom Lynch and how he's being approached? In some situations, yes. Um, I'm very disappointed in that a little bit because I think in some situations, he is being cotton wooled way too much. Mm-hmm. Um, if he's as good a player as he is, he should be able to handle some of the things that are happening to him. And he has shown his temper to be quite low, that he gets quite angry quite quickly. The punch, which everybody wants to talk about. I'm sorry, Tigers Nation. That did not hit him in the chest and rise up. It hit him in the throat. It's a little square. If you watch the square. video, the first contact is his throat. Does Hooker ham it up a little bit? because it's not exactly full fledged. I'm going to knock you out punch. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does hooker look for the call? Yes. Does he get it? No. So in some situations, I'm really kind of tired of this crying wolf. The forwards don't get away with it. And the back men do. Mm -hmm. I don't completely agree with that. I think in some situations, these forwards need to be smart. They need to really understand where's the ball, what's going on. There's going to be a camera on you. I, I, I disagree with some of these experts that are like, well, these four, these four words uh, that they, they, they get persecuted because they do something, but these backmans don't. The cameras are on both of them. If they do something stupid, we're going to know about it. Exactly. It, it, that's just the biggest thing. Do I believe these four words are as cotton wooled as they should be yes i think in some situations they are treated they they are basically told that they can get away with anything Mm -hmm. because they're superstars because that's what everybody wants to see everybody wants to see goal kickers i'm an oddball i actually like to see good footy i don't care (laughs) it i want you to earn it's a bit controversial there speaking of controversy you want good footy and not just goal scoring blasphemy I, i 
I'm sorry. <laughs> I I want you to earn a mark. I don't want you to get it because oh, I got hit by a defender and How I'm much a of a forward. James Harden NBA fan now, are you? <laughs> Oh, don't get me started on that particular <laughs> league, please. I'm, oh, I'm one away. of those. I'm, I'm one of those. The NBA athletes are incredible athletes. They're incredible players, but you don't play basketball. You play one on one with a few extras on the court. <laughs> That's uh, my personal now, opinion. Well, we, let's let's not go through no. there since this is my a footy game. With, it's not with an Tom NBA. Lynch is that. Um... It was a blatant cheap shot, especially with him coming back around, him scoring the bread basket, knocking the wind out, got him twice. Now, he was punished. He was punished. But he was fine. A two thousand dollar fine for something like this. Uh, I I don't understand what when um I was able to talk with the guy, the fellows from the Cobra Cast, which you can go check out our channel right now. We talked about this a little bit, and then they had an excellent point where the same thing in the AFL that happens in the NFL, that happens in the NBA, that happens in MLB, that happens in most sporting leagues around the world, is that Tom Lynch is a popular guy. He's an outstanding player, so they're probably not going to punish him as much, whereas he's, he's a top guy, so they're going to find him some money, a, a minimal amount of money at that. And he's going to be fine. Nothing's going to happen. But say this was a guy lower down the totem pole, you can see him gone for a round or two, and no one would bat an eye at that. So there yeah. is, there's a discrepancy. Whether there's a blatant difference in punishment and amount of punishment, depending on how good and how much of a draw you are um, in, in your league, and that is something that shouldn't be a thing. I know, crazy statement to make, but it, it should be fair even weird right is, is that too well, hot of a take not really because here here we'll, we'll add we'll add more to the proverbial pile too is that he was submitted to the tribunal for the strike because of a progression of the two or three weeks because of his issue with Gold coast and him having the backman where he threw a punch to the gut and everybody saw it well he got off of that well he did go to the tribunal this morning this this evening or this morning for us <laughs> and they dropped the charge so he's still free to play this week which only added more to the proverbial contrail soup let's add on some croutons and some crackers and some cheese to that proverbial controversial oh, soup. Hell yeah let's load this because thing not only did he just get a fine but he got completely off did not get a thing didn't get a week didn't get two weeks didn't get a warning didn't get a please explain he got off. Not so, like the club's going to be paying most that. of that fine, or if not the full fine anyway. <laughs> well, and, and it's, and I and I've said this a little bit too, is, is being a massive sports fan is is, and you're you're an NHL fan too. Is mm -hmm. my personal opinion is is that I think the NHL disciplinary system is absolutely the same way. If you put butts in the seats, you're you could you could almost cripple a guy mm -hmm. and you're not going to get suspended if because Connor owners, McDavid went out and slashed a dude that. right mm -hmm. Connor McDavid went out and slashed a hell of a guy he will get fined maybe a couple games so it looks good on the NHL's part but if you're talking about a guy nope. a, a lower tier guy maybe but if you're talking like a third liner a fourth liner they're out for two weeks three weeks who knows well, it's like Sidney Crosby in the one Stanley oh. Cup Finals when he shoved P.K. Subban's head down in the ice. What did he get? Nothing. Sidney Crosby, that's, uh, that's a but different that's, name for a different day. and that, That's a perfect point there. Perfect point. It, it's, it's, not, it's not just to, uh, like Tom Lynch because he's a dirty player for this. Um, it's not like I totally don't like the guy anymore, but all I'm saying this was a Bush League move, and he should have been punished accordingly. I don't care about your, your stature. I know the league might, but as a fan, don't care about how much money you bring. It's all about being fair, being equal, and showing it, – it's all about integrity it is a league, and this is not showing integrity from the AFL. Completely agree. I, I'm one of those I, – I don't care about your stature. If you do something stupid, you should you should sit out for it. Mm -hmm. I don't care I don't care if you're Patty Cripps from the Carlton Blues or you're the best player at like Dangerfield from the Cats – or Kelly from the West Coast Eagles. I don't care if you do something stupid. You should be sitting out, not getting away because a few extra people are going to watch the game because you're playing. That exactly. that, that is rather frustrating, and it does kind of show 
the kind of double standard, kind of like what Rifty told you, told you in the last in the last mm-hmm. one with the with the sling tackles. Sean Burgoyne is as a legend, excellent player, should have been suspended for a sling tackle in week <laughs> two on Dangerfield. He gets away with it. They change the rule because we can't make it look like we're helping out Sean Burgoyne. Nope. Got to be a little later. more discreet, right? <laughs> well, well, and then as but then as Rifty said, two weeks later he does it again. Oh, we can't suspend him. We can't do that. I'm like, come on. If you're going to teach these guys to not do these brain fades, as they say, you got to punish them. I, I, I know it doesn't. I know people want to see him play. Mm-hmm. I don't care. If you're going to do something dumb, take a seat. Thank you. Exactly. 100% hit it right on the button with that one. But also, we were kind of talking about that in, in a sense. Something you mentioned was kind of like an issue with flopping or staging is this really becoming a more uh kind of kind of bigger issue in, in footy recently tigers nation's really gonna hate me off this one. <laughs> hey oh tigers my. nation we we love you guys there's nothing it's nothing personal we're just talking news all, all, all due respect tigers nation you guys have an incredible team you, you guys are going to be a, a a threat but yes. you, you've got a couple of guys in the back that really got away again um the two free kicks in the Essendon game just I mean I understand the referee's jobs is hard mm-hmm. but when you've got I mean world class actors I mean I have Emmys <laughs> in, the, in, in the back of my car that for them because I mean they were dives I mean I'm surprised the French judge didn't give him a 10 for the dive I mean it was <laughs> insane and the worst part about it is is that both the players that staged um, Vlaston and I can't remember the other one right off the top of my head are incredible defenders they're really good defenders they don't need to do it but as rifty kind of explained the last one is that is that they feel that little bit of pressure on their back and they're like oh i can get a free kick out of this because they know they're beat Mm -hmm. they absolutely know they are beat so they're going to do anything they can to be able to make sure that they don't give up a goal oh yeah so they throw their arms, they drop down, they act like they act like they've been hit by the hidden sniper mole and just <laughs> drop down and the referee falls for it. And, and it's, I don't fault the referees because if you look at it at full speed, it looks legit. Like it legitimately looks like the, the forward pushes him, it's which a very is again, hard spot for the refs to be in. Like you said, it looks exactly. Fun. And, 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 the subjective nature of the refereeing makes that possible. And, and that's why it's like the rule changes really irk me off sometimes because they've really, I think the AFL tinkers with the toy too much. They, they tinkered with the holding the ball rule early in the year because heaven forbid Clarko not get what he wants. <laughs> I, again, I love Clarko to death. Amazing coach. Going to be one of the best coaches in the last 20 years, but he whines about a little bit of not getting holding the balls in game and now all of a sudden the AFL's like oh my gosh we got to make sure Clarko's not here we got to make sure Clarko's happy and what happens now we're even more confused on what a holding the ball is because the explanations that we get from the AFL and then from the referees don't match up so it's been rather frustrating watching some of these games because Mm -hmm. what you would clearly think is a holding the ball or clearly think is a stage and should be either a play on or a free kick for the person not staging mm-hmm. is not being called. And that's the most frustrating. And it's like, they're trying to stamp it out. They're trying to do fines. I get to the point now, once you do three stages, that should be a game. Yeah. I mean, I'm a top, I'm a Tom Papley fan, but yes, the guy stages, he does mm-hmm. because in some situations, he's not exactly a big guy. He's got to try to do whatever he can. So I don't know. It, mm-hmm. It's, it's rather frustrating when you want to watch good footy at this European soccer fall down. Like you've been shot by a sniper stuff <laughs> is annoying. And I love the game of soccer. Mm-hmm. I love all sports. I love watching the game, but I want the pure, I don't want this trying to trying to fool the referee. I mean, I don't want a Derek Jeter. It hit the end of the bat, but I'm going to act like it hit me so I can get oh, a, when it a just hits the nub of the bat and then nope, yep. and off the hand. Yep, and I'm and I'm a coach. I mean, I I know what it is to try to make sure that you try to play to your advantage. But come on, I mean, at you know, least like as players, we've all been know. taught kind of subtle ways to kind of draw either draw penalties or to make it look like that. And as a player, 
uh, from like a player's perspective, like if you do it once in the game just to get like a free kick here or there, I don't see that as an issue. But like you alluded to, once you're doing two, three times a game, then it's becoming a problem, and then it there should probably be something done in order to prevent stuff like that from happening. Of course, it's a hard position for the refs to be in because it's happening so quick. So quick. And you can't watch everything at the same time, no matter how many refs are out there. But at the no. same time, with that being said, if it's getting to be a problem, which it might be, it's I don't think it's a problem yet, but it's getting there. And so it's... you might have to do something a little preemptive almost. When you when you're having staging fines in at least one game every week, that's when you start noticing it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And and I think it, it, it's one of those where it's like kind of going off your thing is is that do it once, don't do it again. If you do it twice, it becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the problem sometimes with some of the some of these youth leagues nowadays is that you're getting coaches teaching this, and and it's it's and it's a travesty that these young players are seeing these people kind of disrespecting the game a little bit like I, I know i didn't grow up with this game but i love the purity when this game is played right mm -hmm. so to see it soiled even like i said i'm a swans fan i hate that papley does it mm -hmm. well play through it's, it. it's a football play player. through it it's hard oh, when yeah. that stuff is happening especially football has become a little more prevalent like i understand what to, it's all about gaining an edge it's always about getting that little extra edge up on your opponent but like even when my teammates would do it in games and we benefit off of it, but at the same time there's still it's it's a traditionalist in me that, that just mm -hmm. it, it just irks me a little bit and it, it kinda kinda hurts my heart. I know it's super it, it's old fashioned, it's tradition, but that's especially a game like a sport like the AFL, a sport like footy, that's so cemented in tradition. It like you said, it's maybe a, it can be seen as disrespectful probably a, something that we want to move away from then also one thing we want to talk about is uh another thing you kind of spoke about a little earlier is the little footy festival we got going on now this has been kind of put into place due to i guess the season and changes seem to be made due to the global pandemic and all that kind of fun stuff but we've been seeing a lot more football games in a lot less time and is this something that you'd like to see continue into next season or is this something we should kind of it's a one-year thing it's cool while it lasted but then we should go back to how it originally is typically played this one is fun for me because i don't know like there's part of me that there's the traditionalist the, the usual almost kind of like the nfl nature of the afl where it's thursday at the earliest mm -hmm. most of the time friday through sunday yeah with the occasional monday game depending on like queen's birthday different stuff like that but honestly like i enjoyed it i, I really did do i think two and a half weeks of it is a little excessive yes like i think it would be it would be awesome to see them do two rounds in the span of a week and a half like that would be great do a thursday to wednesday like have games every day through that and get a full round if not two rounds through just so then maybe you could maybe have a mid-season bye week if mm -hmm. you needed for all the clubs that way you could maybe put a little less a little less of of the the wear and tear on some of these players but honestly i i, I thoroughly enjoyed it um i would like to see one week week and a half max of it but if it doesn't I, i'm not going to be upset um again this year is such an anomaly because mm -hmm. it, it is <laughs> so different with covid and and again with the hub situation and the flying in and out and different stuff like that there, there have been a lot of things that i think the afl has been really really good at they've been letting experiment the shorter quarters normally the quarters are 20 minutes not 16 20 mm -hmm. minutes they shorten the quarters because of wear and tear then again like I said, the, the footy festival, because normally it's you play in the span of three or four days. So most of the time you're getting five or six days rest. So this year having four days rest is, is really kind of different for some of these players. But they have shown they can do it. And then kind of like I, I really like to fly in, fly out, because in some situations these players now can get home a little bit more instead of being in a hotel in the West Coast for four days not getting and leaving on a Tuesday 
playing a game on Friday and not getting home till Sunday. It's like, just fly in the day before, Mm -hmm. acclimatize maybe a day and a half before, acclimatize, play your game, and then go home that night. In some situations, it may save you a little bit of money. We don't know. But (laughs) in the long run, would I like to see a footy festival next year? One week, one week and a half, maybe. If it doesn't, I'm not going to cry about it. But it was it was a lot of fun to have footy with me working early in the mornings. It was always fun to wake up and have a footy game to keep an eye on while I was trying to work. So that was kind of nice. Oh, yeah. But there were people back home after about 10 days of this that were already going, okay, I'm kind of tired of this. I'd like a day <laughs> off of footy. Right. So I, I completely understand mm-hmm. it. Um, so See, but speaking about just staying home, Let's talk about something that, I mean, Elijah Taylor did stay home, but not in the right ways that the AFL wants it to. Let's talk about his suspension due to uh, breaking the little COVID guidelines that the AFL has put in place. And is it a little harsh or is it something that needed to be done? Okay, so for those of you that do not know, Elijah Taylor is a young forward for the Sydney Swans. Mm-hmm. So I so I know a little bit more about this than some. Um, what actually ended up happening was was it was a COVID breach in Western Australia as they were quarantining for their two matches out in the West Coast. Elijah Taylor is originally from Western Australia. Um, in his utter brilliance, he decided <laughs> to sneak his girlfriend into the team hotel by having her i think it was climb at least one fence and walk through several other things (laughs) she got into the team hotel for almost eight hours before she was discovered the team reported the breach elijah taylor was then suspended for the rest of the season which means he will set out the last five games of the year now Everybody's going five games for one little breach of bringing in his girlfriend. No COVID. That's good. But there's two problems, not just one. Not only did he break AFL protocols of the breach, he also breached Western Australia's COVID protocols. Mm -hmm. So I understand why he was dealt with severely. I really do. I understand he's an eight, 19 year old kid. He hadn't seen his girlfriend in several months. He was back in his home state. He was super excited to see her. And unfortunately he didn't make the right decision. Mm -hmm. Do I think the punishment is fair? Yes. Because in this situation, if she had COVID and he gets COVID and any of the Sydney Swans get COVID this season is over. It is over over Mm -hmm. so i completely understand it It, it's does the kid need to be vilified no i I don't think any of us can sit here and say that we were perfect in our decision makings in our entire life is the kid going to make a, a wrong decision yes and unfortunately the afl has had a massive problem now is trolls being um rather prominent so we'll go back to the previous remember the staging issue i was telling you about one of the players that was stages got a death threat via twitter Uh, and instagram and elijah taylor who was western well unfortunately it gets even better Mm -hmm. or or worse depending on how you look at it much worse is elijah taylor is a a indigenous descent oh boy i see where this is going he was racially vilified by somebody on Twitter for that decision too. And unfortunately this isn't the first racial incident that we've had in the AFL. This has been about the fourth or fifth this season, including the incredibly smiley and awesome Eddie Betts was racially vilified on online. And the guy is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in the world. I mean, he's, he's always smiling when he plays. He's probably one of the best indigenous players to play Mm -hmm. in the last 20 years and there's still some scumbag online that believes he's better because he's got a different pigmentation so i love those kind of people they really do add so much to this world uh, and to to sports Uh, oh yeah they don't they don't add they don't add much besides a, a specific stain to the underwear of life shall we say 
uh, you're putting it very, very nicely and politely in that. Well, just, well you do. You have sponsors, sir. I don't want. I, I don't want your sponsors to have a problem. I would have said another specific word, but I, I'm, I'm going to. We nice all know here. what you're thinking. We appreciate you keeping it like that. We can we can talk some more elsewhere about what really happens. But with this whole Elijah Taylor situation is so funny to me, especially as an, a gridiron football fan, because it's so damn similar to what happened with the Seahawks. Their rookie, one, one of the rookies, snuck in his girlfriend, or at least attempted to sneak in his girlfriend to the team hotel. And he dressed her up. She didn't have to climb fences or anything, but he tried to dress her up as like a punter for the team. <laughs> Got caught. Uh, at least he tried to punt her. At least, at, at least, least he, at least it was somewhat believable. At least he was smart with like, oh, skinny person, yeah, punter maybe. So credit to him. Poor the execution. Him and Elijah Taylor should should link up. Um, because he was cut. And Elijah's suspended, so they're not doing anything right now. So they should link up, probably to our DMs, maybe refine their plans on how to sneak in girlfriends into team hotels because they both need a little work on it. Yeah, unfortunately, but it's like I said, we'll we'll live and learn. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna vilify no. the kid. He, he made a mistake, and mm -hmm. again, unfortunately, as we kind of talked about in the first episode, is that. Th one of the things I really noticed is that AFL players a lot of times have homesickness mm -hmm. and because Elijah Taylor is young, it was the first time being in Western Australia since being drafted and since going over to Sydney to play with exactly. the Swans. I, I kind of understand it. I don't, I don't agree with how it was done, No, but I understand. I understand. I, I get where I'm going to give the kid a pass. I, I get where they're coming from. I'm not going to vilify them. I'm going to make jokes on them for, for sure. I'm going 100% crack jokes about them because it's pretty, like like in, in, if we're not looking at the serious implications from it it's it's kind of funny it's kind of funny um, if you take away covid yes yes it, it's pretty funny <laughs> but the, but the problem is 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 like they're pr potentially endangering their team and their season so you can't really let that fly so i understand the punishment but also am not like you said we're i'm not going to really kind of criticize the players for doing what they did it's it's just is what it is. They'll learn about it. Fortunately for either both um, the Swans and the Seahawks, like no one else really caught. There was no spread of, of any disease. So that's positive, but it's just something we got to move on and learn from. Mm -hmm. But let's kind of get near the end of this. We want your round, the, at least the rest of your round 13 tips. What, uh, what predictions you got? What can you give us? Um, oh man! For this, did, you, did you want to go through round twelves and thirteens the review of the games? I would, I would love uh, for for a, a little bit of recap on those because I, I know I you got it. some, uh, you got some stuff to say. Oh yeah, I always make sure to have some good notes. So, yeah. so okay, so we'll, we'll skip, we'll skip the last game we did talk about, which is mm -hmm. the Sydney GWS game since we already talked about. It. Uh, so we'll, 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 yes. I know. It's, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I sorry. moved on. I moved on. It's okay. Then yeah, also, poor, well, poor Adelaide for getting smoked by by Geelong. <laughs> Geelong, Geelong v Port, sixty point loss, ninety one to thirty. This, this was, this kind of this game was the perfect personification of this year's AFL season. Mm -hmm. So wacky, nobody, nobody saw that one coming. Um, a huge shout out to Tommy Hawkins, the big full forward for the Geelong Cats, kicking six goals mm -hmm. and instantly marking himself down as, as a big favorite for the the Coleman Medal this year. See, my thing was an with absolutely Hawkins. beast beast performance in the front half kicking six goals and looking absolutely he's, unstoppable he's crazy it, it's like a recent game. kind of recent fan of the afl still all i've seen recently so like from what and like uh, nothing before why i started watching but just from the moment i've started really watching is my opinion is that hawkins is the greatest player to ever grace the football fields that that's just from what i've seen <laughs> that dude he's, is he's, he's something he's a, he is a beast when he wants to be, but he has he has his moments of brain fades where he got suspended last year because he threw an elbow in, in one of the late games. So he's he's one of those. He has his moments, mm -hmm. and then there's moments where you literally look at him and you're like, um, you should not be doing that seriously. <laughs> so he's he's kind of one of those where it's like when he's on, he's mm -hmm. on. When he's off, he's off. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the, the thing with with the cats is that is that if he's getting good service and getting the footy. He can absolutely destroy you because he's a really accurate kick. But the problem is, is if he's not, he can he can literally lose his head sometimes. And the guy is so so well spoken and so intelligent that it's like I think he gets a little bit of the white line fever sometimes. He steps <laughs> over the line and he forgets 
some of that intelligence sometimes. So it's very interesting. So, so we'll, we'll move on from that one. That, that was a good, that was, like I said, just a really weird game for me. Yeah. So that, that was, I was not expecting, I was expecting that to be the game of the round, but that right. one's coming up a little bit later. Um, oh man, this, this next one is quite interesting. Brisbane beats North by one 53, 52, but this was an ugly ugly game neither team was playing really well i actually saw the highlights and they specifically showed both coaches absolutely giving their teams a spray oh that was real quick footy lingo that is getting yelled at yeah that is i'm guessing the spray comes from the spit when when you're yelling coach neither coach was happy reshaw no. was absolutely livid those halftime the lo- halftime locker room again the shots were yep. hilarious to me yep. but, but oh, i know fame. exactly what happens because i've had that happen plenty of times before when i was playing I, football as long as you've played sports you, you know you've got to spray everybody's got to spray at least once especially but. shout out to my my college coach because he had braces in and so he would literally spray <laughs> oh boy that's, it was rough there's a spot so this this game was just it was ugly. The first half was just absolutely atrocious football. Mm-hmm. Now, Brisbane kind of kind of took over a little bit in the third quarter. North end is out crawling back and just they run out of time. North had a chance to win that game late, and Brisbane's defense kind of held up. So that was another one of those where that, that trap game. Brisbane survives, but their their lack of goal kicking really kind of almost got them in that game. So so moving on from there, Melbourne bests Collingwood by 56 Collingwood's injury issues mm-hmm. was really exposed in this game this round Melbourne was kind of weird with this, this because it, it seems sorry to like cut you off but um between it, 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 was, it seems like either it was a really close game really competitive game or it was a total blowout and not even close it was so yeah, that's... bipolar that's that's footy nature it just kind of all depends footy is very much a momentum game Mm -hmm. if if you get momentum you can overrun somebody Mm -hmm. if another team gets momentum that they're down they can make a massive run and and make a blowout game a lot closer but this was just one of those where quite simply the d's played the type of footy that a lot of their fans thought they would would play going into this season melbourne was picked to be a top eight team by a lot of experts so them being out of the eight right now really has put a lot of pressure on Simon Goodwin, their coach, because I mean, he's getting to the point where his seat's getting a little warm. Mm-hmm. That there, there, are, there are some of the old Melbourne brass that are really looking at, I mean, is Simon Goodwin really the coach for this team? But I, I got a huge shout out to Christian Petraka with an all Australian game. The guy is an absolute monster right now um, for the Melbourne demons. He, he's definitely one of those guys that he's definitely the best player on Melbourne right now on a team that cannot make up its mind whether they want to be in the finals or not because they have great performance and then a uh, uh, performance <laughs> so okay now to the game we already kind of discussed a lot carlton beats frio by four game of the round 40 to 36 absolute slog of a game in the wet both teams having so much fun with the footy frio jumps out early on carlton looks like it's going to be an absolute blowout carlton spends most of the second half fighting back into it and i don't know if you saw the highlights did you see the falcon in this game i posted that on instagram put that on my twitter i put that on like my snapchat because oh man it was a heavy ball because it was wet and he took it Square to the, the, I think him right between the eyes. Mm-hmm. It was the most beautiful, painful thing I've seen in quite a while. And the commentator, I, I don't know his name, but he sold it well with this call up uh, call it just a vicious falcon. And mm-hmm. there's no other way to put it. It was bad. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it was Br- I think it was uh, Brayshaw is is was the announcer. But one of I my love other his voice one too, of my other one of, one of my other favorite and other favorite announcers that was on the Hot Breakfast, Luke Darcy, mm-hmm. says a little bit later in one of the highlights, he goes, "It hit him so hard, he's going to have Sharon on the top of his forehead." <laughs> I mean, I, I it was like, five, it was like <laughs> five meters away, and it's the good part is Simpsons is Cade Simpson is the guy who took the mm-hmm. it was the guy that took the Falcon. He got up. He he yeah, eventually he was fine. fine. 
but you could just tell like it just it it got on to him so fast you can tell when the pain registered and it was friendly fire too which is the worst part oh yeah and the, and the worst part about it is is that is that they were trying to go the other way and then his forehead ricochets it back frio's way so it was like it's it's not only not only does he get the embarrassment of the falcon of the century of the of the year in my opinion right now it's hard to beat this one yeah uh, th there may be another one but this one's probably close to the falcon of the year in my opinion um but the fact that the ball then is going free mantles way is kind of the double whammy and then with the triple uh, whammy with the friendly fire is just oh boy all bad <laughs> yeah but then and then kind of like as we discussed with 14 seconds left jack noons ends out getting a free kick along the boundary absolutely cold-blooded killer nails it from 45 out of the boundary mm -hmm. the carlton fans go nuts if you go online you can see the the carlton fans reactions and even some of the the other teammates who did not play in this game's reaction absolutely classic to see the blue baggers fans enjoying the footy nowadays mm -hmm. so so that was awesome moving from there oh boy another fun one western beats adelaide by 57 <laughs> Poor, poor crows. I, mm -hmm. I feel so sorry mm -hmm. for you. The Western Bulldogs quite simply outclassed Adelaide, Adelaide in every man. single this... section of the field. Um, what's it's uh, the cool thing about this, Ross, is that I, I may have some good news for the crows here coming Ooh. just a little bit. So I may have some good news. Just okay. give me a okay. second here. Okay. Um, then moving on, St. Kilda and Essendon. St. Kilda beats Essendon by 35 68 33 in a game that quite simply st kilda absolutely smothered essendon in this game mm -hmm. usually essendon is a really good rebounding team off the half back line and they just could not get anything done in this game st kilda again showing why they are a really solid solid team in the finals and, and could be a team to look out for um, kind of as we discussed moving on the west coast beats hawthorne by 32 81 49 in a game that quite simply west coast really owned this game almost the entire time nick nat kelly shuey that the midfield absolutely bossed and flying liam ryan took several screamers in this game showing why he's one of the best Specky mark takers in the league mm -hmm. right now absolutely well, it was just of highlight game. after highlight after highlight i it, oh yeah it was remarkable west coast is in fuego right now i mean i cannot wait for this next one when, when we come up to our tips here um last game of round of round 12 richmond beats gold coast by 21 53 32 the sun's are starting to hit a wall a little bit with this young talent the process for these guys i mean the philadelphia 76ers process for the suns is, is it's uncanny <laughs> how many years of absolute atrocious football and, and it's good to see them playing better but unfortunately they just when you go up against the reigning premiers who are absolutely deadly when they play their type of footy um there's just not much you can do for the Suns. You can definitely tell their legs are starting to go slowly a little bit. They're kind of hitting that wall. The Suns kept it close, but unfortunately they just did not have enough to, to, to beat the reigning premiers. Yeah. So, and that's round 12 fast forward round 13, the Sir Douglas Nichols indigenous round, always one of my favorites jerseys. Absolutely spot on. This absolutely. Is my first time love to it. So the, those Guernseys were, really good um in our episode with with the boys of the cobra cast we kind of talked about our favorite guernseys and um all, it's it's hard because like all of them are were pretty solid there i don't think there's really a bad one no and in, in, in my uh, um i'll take my bias i love the sydney swans one and i've actually swans i actually know the good. story the story is absolutely awesome Ooh. it's actually about how the black swan gets his feathers because if you look on, in the belly of the jersey, it's uh -huh. a black swan, not a white swan. That's really cool. My favorite yeah, it's a, was it's a uh... really awesome story. It, the The jersey was made by an indigenous member um, in the Sydney area. Mm -hmm. I think has some family ties to to Mickey O'Loughlin, the 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 Swans, uh, really well known um, 
full forward from super the cool. early 2000s okay. and it's an absolutely awesome story so if i get a chance i'll, I'll tell you that story okay. but since we're doing the review i'm i, I don't want to waste too much Fair. time here we're, I did, we're already I, going you, long you enough. left the swans with but i gotta say i got you out the the west coast those guernseys with, with the the eagle wings on them in the gold yep. that I love the look at that. Those that, are those are those solid. are sick. I always like that. The tiger, the tigers, and the Essendon jumpers are always really, really good. But yes. when you have dream, when you have dream, the dream time game is always one of the more celebrated uh, of this round. So that doesn't mm-hmm. shock me a bit that they're some of the best ones. So we'll, we'll go into it. first game of the round. Carlton beats Gold Coast by 33, 60 to twenty seven. And kind of like Rifty said, you could tell the Suns really, really, really were affected by the weather Mm -hmm. being really super hot being super humid um it's the only time i've ever seen eddie betts not be able to take a mark i mean i swear he couldn't catch he couldn't catch the cold if he wanted to um just because of the the dew so it was hard for him to catch the footy this was kind of an ugly game to start off the the blues end up winning this one but so many just you could definitely tell the weather kind of affected this one yeah but this was a fun one to start off moving from there Western beats Melbourne by 28, 80 to 52. Melbourne's Jekyll and Hyde form just rears its ugly head massively in this one. First half, pretty much most of this game, the Doggies, the Doggies Melbourne for the first half is pretty close. It was actually really good. And the Dogs in the third quarter and us kicking six consecutive goals and they kind of blew they, they kind of took a close game to a blowout mm-hmm. really quickly. So it really kind of pushed a lot of well-known Melbourne supporters to say is Melbourne going to make the finals or are we going to have some issues? So it is definitely going to be interesting to see uh, kind of a surprise to this round port only beats Hawthorne by 10 68 58 in a prototypical Hawthorne performance. Hawthorne comes in. Nobody expects them to win. Nobody expects them to be close and they keep it close. Most of the time port, really kind of you could tell the game against Geelong really affected them in this game they just did not come out solid um so that was really interesting port really kind of lucky to win this game this is Mm -hmm. a game sometimes Clarko finds a way to pull out of pull out of his hat he pulls the rabbit out of his hat sometimes (laughs) against upper level teams so for port to win this game against a tough Hawthorne team that never goes down never loses games easily is you got to give a little bit of a kudos to Port for bouncing back off that Geelong loss. Richmond Essendon, the dream time game. This is always so much fun. The welcome to country was absolutely awesome to see the, the people of the Northern territories fully embrace this game and to see them rocking the flag, to see them wearing the tribal, the tribal paint was absolutely awesome. So I always love watching this game. Richmond pretty much dominated this game a a lot early. Um, But one thing to kind of go off of it for Essendon was, is um, I think they had talked about this with the Cobra cast is Irving Mosquito with his premiere looked absolutely electric. I cannot wait to watch this youngster continue to play. He kicked two goals, had an absolutely awesome performance in a debut. Yes. And a loss, but I think the bombers faithful have another really good indigenous player besides McDonald tip and Woody mm-hmm. to jump on. And I think with this upcoming weeks, this it could be quite interesting to see what Essendon does over these next couple of weeks with this young, this, this young man hopping into the, to their lineup. So it'll be definitely a lot of fun to see that. Now this next game, um, Oh boy. Uh, yeah, especially as a Swans fan. So, uh, you, I know you like your, your smash mouth footy, you know, just like a bunch of goal scoring. And so, um, Sydney kind of helped you out with that. They're just trying to, to play the game of footy that you like, right? Oh boy. This was, this was a, <laughs> uh, let's just safe to say I, I woke up for this game thinking this is going to be a good game. I was, I was fully hopped up on the GWS result thinking you got a good <laughs> shot. The only thing that worried me was Dean Rampy went home with a broken hand so I was a little bit worried about our back line and it really showed. Um, Frio basically smothered and absolutely pressured Sydney from pillar to post in this game. Uh, final score, oh man, was 60 to 19, mm, a 41 19. point loss. Sydney just, they kicked the first goal of the game. They kicked one of the last goals of the game. And that was about it. Unfortunately, <laughs> they just, they just did not have the offensive firepower 
losing Buddy Franklin at the start of the year and then finding out before the game that he's going to be sat the rest of the year. They're going to sit him out and hopefully get him right, cherry right for next year. We'll definitely have to see. Uh, unfortunately, the Swans run home should be fun, so it'll be not so easy on Coach for when it comes to his team, but there's still a lot of good footy to watch, so I'll be fine. Uh, so <laughs> moving from that as quickly as possible. Uh, Geelong beats Adelaide by 28 in a game where Adelaide really, really stayed in this game. They they were really a pest to Geelong. Um, mm-hmm. It was it was tough. I mean, I, I really Adelaide's youth is starting to kind of hit their stride now. Um, young Charlie McAdams had a great game in this game for the Adelaide for Adelaide, but the catch just had a little too much in the end. Uh, but uh, I think the Crows may get one here in the next couple of weeks. I think hot, I, I, maybe a hot take, maybe a hot take. We'll see. I don't think but the I, Crows are going winless this year. It, it I looks don't like think so either. I, they're, they're just slowly they're... doing something mm-hmm. there where they might. It's going to take some luck on, on their part, I, I think. But I think they get lucky in one of these uh, last rounds. Each and every game they're building, they're going to get one. We'll just see. We'll see. Um, <laughs> next, the game of the round for this round, Brisbane beats St. Kilda by two. Yeah. in an absolutely amazing game a tight contest pretty much the entire time brisbane's goal kicking is the reason this game was as close to they kicked i think it was 18 behinds in this game absolutely <laughs> insane that if they kick straight this could have been a 40 point win so 18 behinds is um not i can we say not ideal um uh, that's for, that for might be the understatement of the century <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, that the game was absolutely awesome. It, it, it was it was really close most of the game. St. Kilda was always in it. This is a good finals matchup. I would love to see these two teams face again each other in the finals because it would be quite interesting to see if St. Kilda makes a couple of changes. But mm-hmm. I was I was really really enjoyed the, the this game. West Coats beats GWS by twelve. Can we skip this? Um, <laughs> well, we can. Uh, but I, I are really, we? <laughs> I really don't want to disrespect Jeremy McGovern because Jeremy McGovern in the back half had an absolutely Mm -hmm. clinic on the intercept mark, taking a couple of screamers. West Coast, like I said, they showed why they're my number one team right now in the power rankings because they are absolutely – right now, if they play like this, there are very few teams in the league that are going to be close to them. Richmond, maybe we'll see maybe Brisbane, if Brisbane can get their run and gun style, maybe St. Kilda because of their quick, but those right now are my top four teams right now would be my, would be my preliminary finals four matchups. And I would be a happy camper right now, but again, I don't know port still there. We'll, We'll see, but that was definitely, that was definitely a game where GWS again ran into the same problem. They get down early. They have to crawl back. They crawl back. Third quarter, it happens again. Mm -hmm. West Coast pops out. And then Jeremy McGovern goes nuts in the fourth quarter, takes like eight intercept marks. GWS could not hit a target worth a darn. Yeah. Even with Toby Green back, which a lot of people thought, okay, this is this is your great shot. The the young, talented Toby Green. And it just didn't it just didn't pan out. So we'll see. Fortunately, as a Giants fan, they are still I mean, they they dropped down to eleven. But the, the silver line is that they're still just one game, four points out mm-hmm. from the top eight. So they have plenty of time to get back in there and yep. to, to kind of make it a little more comfortable. But the way I'm feeling right now is I'm um, a little uneasy right now. Yeah, and we'll definitely see that their next two matchups. Their next two matchups are quite interesting. And the last game of the round, and the USA fans will love this. Collingwood beats North by 30 and big Mason Cox Godzilla. gets back in the lineup. Ooh, back in the lineup, kicks a couple of good goals, kind of back. You can definitely tell he's a little rusty. He hasn't yeah. been on the field a little bit. But big Mason Cox being back on the field definitely helps out the the, the forward line for Collingwood. But unfortunately, Steel Sidebottom announces that the, birth of, the latest birth of his son will have him leave the bubble and head back to Melbourne to be there for the birth of his child. So unfortunately, Understandable. with the good <laughs> comes the bad. Unfortunately, one of your best midfielders and one of the best midfielders in the game is still Sidebottom leaving. Mm-hmm. Mason C- Cox comes back in, but will he get the same support that he did in this game and the next ones? We'll definitely see, but... Uh, definitely kind of a steadier for Collingwood, but we'll mm-hmm. definitely have to see. The Pies are definitely one of those teams where 
they're they're on that knife's edge a couple of bad games and they're out of the finals but we'll we'll, we'll see, see so. I, I like this game especially as being the american i am you can hardly tell from the background my video uh, if you're watching this on the YouTube edition, <laughs> you, you can't tell. There's, there's only a couple flags in the background. No big deal. But um, yeah, there's no patriotism here. Oh, not at oh, all. Not, not at all. Don't even, don't even let me show you my Gadsden flag uh, outside of the camera. But being uh, able to good. see the um, the man that that I initially got into the sport with because he, he kind of introduced me on the Pat McAfee show. And being able to finally see him come back, see him perform, especially pretty good performance as well, considering that it's, it's his first game back, a little rusty. But I just love watching him play because he's a big dude that um he's only 6'10", you know. He runs like a giraffe. So he, he's one of them lanky fellas at that. It looks a little awkward, but he does play kind of a hard version of, of football. He, he gets in there. He makes the plays. He it helps that he's tall, but he goes up. He gets those marks, and he um, you know he has a good leg on him. So he he's kind of like the, the the football I like to watch as well because it's not like he can style. He he has style points. You know he can make mm -hmm. plays. He can get those specky marks. But he also is just really good at playing the kind of the, the grindy kind of football, the smash mouth kind of football that is a traditionalist like you and me. We like to see it, especially as an American going to the game, for him to be able to play the game the way he does. It's uh, it, it's fun to watch, and, and I do appreciate being able to finally watch him. And that was a that was a blast. Did you did you see his tackle that he had when he was playing the mark on Jai Skin? Yep. <laughs> that was absolutely like my favorite. My favorite reaction was the announcer because the announcer was like, "What is he trying to do? Did he honestly think he was going to get by the big guy? Because he <laughs> really didn't make a very good attempt." And no, it's like. Well, and Jai Simpkin is is a really he's a really quick player, so mm -hmm. I was kind of, but his wingspan and, and I and I kind of see what he was doing is he was thinking he could play on when he got the big guy in the air. Yep. The problem is Mason Cox didn't exactly have the highest leap in the world, so that's probably <laughs> why is he got to the ground a little bit faster than Simpkin. Plus the fact he's like eight feet tall, right? And, and <laughs> that that helped too. And so so the fact well, he tried that to run around them it's like a little tackle. kid running around them like one of their parents their parents just goes down and grabs them by the shirt collar and yanks them back <laughs> well it's kind of it's kind of like, like going, the, man? it's kind of like when you see the and some of the professional football teams having the mascots like that are full-fledged adults playing like the youth football teams mm -hmm. if you've ever seen that i mean that's literally what it was that's like exactly. it, was, it was it was like the one mat it was like the one dude mascot that's like a like a 25 year old dude tackling like an eight year old trying to run for a touchdown it just <laughs> he was just so big there was just not much he could do so it's just kind of an interesting little visual so it, that was that was that one was of the fun. more one of the funnier yeah right. round 12 and round game. 13 was awesome and then uh i mean round 12 like, like we were talking about had a little bit of that controversy which is always fun to talk about um, little between the Carlton Frio, between Tom Lynch, talking about staging, talking about you know the good old footy festivals we've been having, little Elijah Taylor, and then also it's just the return of Cogzilla, um, the, the 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 specimen, the the big man uh, from America down the land of down under, that that was that was a joy. But coach, it's been a blast to have another recap show like this. And before we sign off, he wasn't able to join us tonight, but my co-host Jalen Johnson, he has officially come out with, with the team that he, he wants to back. And he is going with, uh, drumroll, I guess I'll just, he's going with the Western Bulldogs. Mm, a good choice. A, a team that's uh, had some recent success with the 2016 flag, so... Uh... And a team that I think they have their moments. They're mm -hmm. they're definitely a fun one. Uh, uh, not to throw you off a little bit, Ross, but did you want to get my tips for this week for these next two weeks? You know what? I would. Can we can we get you round fourteen tips before before we sign off? Can I think I can knock it. Well, around, I can do round fifteen because a, a good six teams have buys, so I can run well, through really quick. Let's, I'll, just, let's I'll do get real that. quick. Let's uh, bonus content to everyone. You thought we were done. And 15. But wait, there's more. We got. <laughs> Uh, I'll I'll do it real quick. Okay, <laughs> no uh, round four, round fourteen. Hawks and Bombers to start off with Essendon and Hawthorne. I have the Bombers taking this one. The game of the round, 
the Richmond Tigers versus the West Coast Eagles. Um, I have the Eagles winning this one. Western Bulldogs, Jalen's now <laughs> new team, takes on the Geelong Cats. Um, Is he going to be sorry. disappointed? Sorry, Jalen. I got Cats <laughs> in this one. Um, uh, Port Adelaide Power versus Sydney Swans. Um, I'm even looking as a forward Swans to this because this could be 9.45 my local time. I could actually... Like realistically, watch this game fully through. So uh, yes, I can see your Sydney close. team. I'm 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 hoping it's close. Unfortunately, <laughs> I I'll I'll take the power. I I I I would love to go with my heart on this one, but I'm gonna go with my head. Um, Dockers v Giants. Uh, sorry, Ross, I gotta go with the Dockers. Damn it! Saw, Three straight losses. <laughs> unfortunately, I what I what I seen of the Dockers and what I see of the Giants, I, I'm a little bit more confident with the Dockers right now. I'd be uh, uh, Melbourne. It, I'd be wrong to disagree with you on that one. Melbourne versus the St Kilda uh, should be a good game in my opinion, but I'm gonna have, I'm gonna pick the Saints in this one. Uh, the old rivalry, Collingwood and Carlton. Uh, sorry, Mason Cox, but I'm going to have to go with the Blues on this one. I, li- I like the Blues. They've been playing really well. Yeah, just wait till Mason Cox kinda... kicks uh, four goals. The, the... <laughs> Goal. Eh, the North, no oh, last okay. game of the week. Let's go. Let's go with the Suns. Suns. Uh, the buy teams would be the Crows and Lions. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, Crows round deserve two. a little bit of a break, I guess. At least the, the Crows aren't going to lose this round. Good for them. <laughs> they won't. And here's, here's the thing. Crows, Crows Nation, you're going to love me. I think they get off the sh- They get off the shot. Or you say uh, that apparently uh, you just have a little connection issues, no big deal. Yeah. But uh, it, it seems like Dean against the Hawks. Oh, there we go. This this may. All right, <laughs> you know it's all good. This stuff happens when you roll for over an hour. Stuff happens. Um, it seems like we're just running to a bit of break, connection <laughs> issues, right? Right there. But I think I think we're all good. Uh, I think we might be back. Coach <laughs> the Adelaide. You think the Crows actually get this one against Hawthorne? I, I think so. I, I I I like the build that the Crows have had. They'll have a bye week to watch the Hawks. The Haw- the Hawks will have All right. <laughs> I guess well what's happening right now is I the like internet it. gods and the footy gods I, I know are just it's, saying it's a weird one. I may, I may Oh yeah, we're definitely on the same connection right here. But it's all good. This is just what happens. It, it's uh, no big deal. We're just gonna keep on chugging, and uh, maybe we might be able to wrap this one um, soon. But I mean, I might have missed a couple. But GWS, real quick, if, if you're there. GWS and Carlton. Uh, I think, I think it's e- GWS Carlton. Yes, let's go. Uh, unfortunately, I oh, come on. <laughs> just say. Just I'm to make sorry. Me happy. I, that'll that'll be tough. That'll be tough. You know, I, uh, I believe. Got, I believe Carlton probably going to win this one. That's going to be a good game. GWS can pull this one off if they actually I, want to get their act together. That one I fought with my. Mm-hmm. And to kind of wrap things, we we're going to finish yeah, the last uh, one of the rounds. Going to be has, Brisbane has and the ability. And then who who who's uh, thinking with the this Lions one? on this one? I, I think with, the, with the injury issues. I let's let's go with the Lions in this one just Lions. because of the fact I, the Pies have so many injuries. Um, do you want me to get West Coast? West Coast Essendon. I got the Eagles. Yeah. Uh, Tigers. Dockers. I got the Tigers. Okay. D Swans. Unfortunately, uh, oh, we'll go with Melbourne on this one. I the Swans are well, just so them in. Yeah. Well, we appreciate that. It, unfortunately, we ran a little. It always got to love the technical a, issues a, that we run into at the end, right? Um, that's that's always oh plenty boy. always fun. so much fun right it, it sounds like well the best part is because you cut out I start talking then you come back in it just sounds like I'm talking over you and it's just a huge mess <laughs> so it's it's plenty of fun but I think this is the, the, the like I say the footy gods and more importantly the almighty zoom gods that seem to just control our lives now more than we ever ever we ever would have thought uh, they're telling us to, to shut the hell up and so I think that's a great spot to, to go there we're going to wrap it up <laughs> Right, um, but um, like I like I said at the beginning of the show, love our AFL correspondent coach Donnie has been to come on and share his massive amounts of knowledge with the sport to us, and so I thank you like usual.
I appreciate it, Ross. It's been a, it's been a fun and uh, real quick. Just for the end, I want to thank you guys, uh, you and the Cobra Cast guys, for all the awesome compliments. I listened to the episode and that was a lot of fun. I, I appreciate it a lot. Um, I, I try my best. I, I know I'm a little bit of a nut sometimes. <laughs> oh, oh, just just a little bit. No big deal. And there's like kind of by my wife numerous times. I've been told by my uh-huh. <laughs> in my back. Uh, yeah, you're there. <laughs> Uh, maybe you know we're just I think yeah. we're, we're gonna take what we can get right now <laughs> this is a load of fun uh, it's been a blast we I thank you so much for your support um, um, especially all the new footy fans just totally taking over you blowing up on some of our m- most recent shows making them some of the most watched shows in show history and, and I really do appreciate the hell out of that and then also just uh, something I've been teasing a little bit but it should be coming out either late this uh, late this week or early next week but we got a AFL, we got we got a footy T-shirt coming out, and so uh, it, it's going it's going to have uh, kind of like similarities to my tweet that I put out that initially got me into the AFL scene. So I got to pay homage to that. I got to talk about you know it's it's a really good sport, it deserves a little more respect, and so um, we're going through some final plans with this one, plan to release it soon. Can't wait to do that because. Uh, of course, to, to really show it, I'm hardly going to be making a profit off of this, um, you know, but I, I really, if you do um, buy that or any of our merch, I really do appreciate that because it does help um, fund the show, which is, it, it's been, you know, it's a little expensive for a hobby, college student and all, but I'm not trying to beg. I just appreciate anything you do for the show. Honestly, 100% just really do from the bottom of my heart appreciate it. Um, because I love doing this, and then also I love you guys um, enjoying it as well. It, it does make me happy. But we're going to wrap things up. This has been a little round 12 and 13 coverage, previewing rounds 14 and 15 from the AFL. A lot of really exciting action coming up. And let's just have a great next couple of rounds, everyone. Enjoy. <laughs>